R3 allows you to uh, to reconfigure the ways in, in which you perceive. And the reason why I'm interested in, uh, in, in art is also because art really allows you to, uh, um, to adopt different like, points of view on the same topic in ways in which maybe philosophy or other like, disciplines that are, that do not allow you to do. So basically I've been working as a curator for like uh, some years now and um, I just realized that I always end up working with um, uh, moving image artist. And I was really interested in looking the cracks into the cracks of this like a collapsing uh, order and see if it was it is possible to let something imagine. Of course you know artists always work on like really specific uh, elements so um Alice again that like what can dust how dust can be used as a kind of way to transfer like information. The sound is always happening in the air like whenever mm -hmm. something moves there's a sound but it's our human uh, selection of our brain that we perceive sound, only the sound that we need. But it's full spectrum of sound, like very micro sound or very huge noise at the other side of the planet that I cannot hear it. I think it's this collection, uh, connection with dust, that is, dust is everywhere, but we don't really pay attention on dust. This project is a generative audiovisual installation and we want to investigate the medium of perceiving sound and how this materiality defines our future listening experience. We are interested in unknown information in the environment. There's a lot of sound that we can perceive, but there's also sound we can't perceive. Microphone that is hanging in the installation and that is listening to what is happening in the space. And of course, there's also the audience involvement in it, because uh, when you walk, when you talk, and it's also, the system is also listening. And it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a real time interactive uh, system that is going on. You know, the, the most question we, uh, we face is that people ask, um, how do, what would they hear from the dust? And I think this question is quite interesting because it's like, I don't know, we don't know, you know. People also ask like, how will we listen to it? Maybe we can, you know, physical swallow the dust or something like that. Maybe it's not through ears, it's through some chemical reaction with your body. And yeah, I think this is the interesting part, but maybe also the difficult part like uh, to say, actually, we don't know, you know, but when we made a project and we say, we don't know the, the ultimate vision, but we're trying to do something for now. But I think I'm more interested in like process of creation, mm -hmm. and they are like unpredictable. They are, they are like a, a infinite outcomes. Uh, they can come from anywhere. And this particular work looks at place where, which is like a few kilometers away from that area, also in the last country, where they've killed the wolves uh, 10 years ago. I was interested in one, what happens in a place where you don't have these predators anymore. Mainly, uh, I, I look at four case studies uh, related to this absence of predator in an ecosystem. The first one is wolf traps that are kind of historical architectures uh, constructed in forests and hills in Spain. The second case study is um, wolf urine that has been imported from the US in bottles to replace the function that the wolf uh, accomplishes in the ecosystem. The fourth case study is like archers that are hired by the administration because um, when you don't have predator, um, the rest of the species uh, grow and therefore they start approaching urban areas and in urban areas sometimes it's not um, suitable to have hunters with fire guns. Uh, so they hire these archers which use this kind of uh, hunting lights also. Ah, that is a hunting light. So that's a hunting light uh, that has like a different like this green and red frequencies, uh, it's not easily perceived by animals uh, and nonetheless allows the hunter to see the, the prey. Mm -hmm. 
So that's the third case study. And the fourth and last case study is um, a feeding station for vultures. Uh, when you don't have a uh, wolf uh, that kills animals, uh, the vultures are the immediate affected, uh, the immediate endangered uh, species after the wolf because they don't have anything to eat. Mm -hmm. So what the local administration does is collecting all the corpses from natural deaths from farms and places around the natural preserve and place them in a feeding station. Recently I, I was reading that statistically the, the most common form of human-animal relations is the act of killing. Instead of thinking of these images of ecology, we should think of the ecology of images, right? That is what, uh, to think about what are the images that we need in order to think about the much more complex relationships that take place at an ethical level, at a social level, at a political level, in, within ecology, right? You know, as a response of, of a, you know, sees like urgent uh, issues, you know, like uh, people, you know, starting uh, being really interested in ecology because, uh, you know, the, the ecological disaster is something that is really like, uh, probably is already happening. So, you know, we should start like thinking about that, you know. Actually, the first time it was uh, shown as a, as a one feed and it was produced by this uh, collective uh, four students studying at uh, uh, Strelka in Moscow. Mm -hmm. There are three Russian uh, artists and one Finnish artist, but they, uh, the film was produced in Moscow. It is actually like about Moscow in 2050. And um, so the film is uh, divided into like five chapters. Say the main topic of, uh, of, uh, of the film is the AI surveillance. So, you know, like the way imagine like uh, in this like really near future, you know, the AI is developed to the point where it becomes kind of like um, ecology. So not something you have done, but it's something the AI, artificial intelligence becomes something that we live in. And, um, and we're like uh, imagining, you know, Moscow in this kind of like new um, ecological arrangement. In the early years of the Soviet Union, like the, the period of cost constructivism, you really have like this really strong uh, propension, this like a tendency to go like towards the future. Mayakovsky was one of my greatest like hero in the, you know, when I was a teenager.